Now, the introduction of vertebrorphin into these hair transplant techniques is groundbreaking. Its ability to inhibit the YES-associated protein, or YAP, and reduce scar formation can potentially revolutionize both FUE and FUT procedures. In FUE, vertiporfin could make the already minimal scars even less visible, enhancing the cosmetic outcome. In FUT, it has potential to significantly reduce the visibility of the linear scar, addressing one of the major drawbacks to this technique. Moreover, vertiporfin's potential to promote hair regrowth in the donor area is particularly game-changing. One of the primary limitations in hair transplant surgeries is the finite supply of the donor hair. By encouraging hair regeneration in the donor area, vertiporfin could effectively create a so-called infinite donor source. This advancement could benefit patients with limited donor hair, including those who have undergone multiple hair transplants or those with extensive balding, offering more effective and versatile treatment options. The integration of vertiporfin into FUE and FUT procedures promises to improve the outcomes of hair transplant surgeries significantly. By enhancing healing, reducing scarring, and potentially increasing the donor hair availability, vertiporfin could make hair restoration more effective and accessible for a broad range of patients, making a significant step forward in the field of hair restoration. So guys, this is why vertiporfin is so exciting for hair restoration. It encourages the skin in the donor area of the hair transplant to heal in a way that allows hair to regrow naturally. Rather than forming a scar where the hair can't grow, no. You are going to be getting more hair if it works, right? If we're seeing what Dr. Baruthi's trial is showing, if that actually is feasible, if all is said and done after this research, if it grows more hair, then you can get somebody going from Norwood 6 potentially, right, all the way up to a Norwood 2, or even a Norwood 1. Who's to say? What we have to determine is that whether or not these hairs are viable when vertiporfin is used, or even how many rounds of this could go, right? Let's say you can only use vertiporfin in, in a single area after four rounds and uh when it's the fifth round of regenerating hair that's when the donor area starts to significantly decline that isn't the case right now it hasn't been enumerated on so we need to do more research but so far at least from dr barguthi's studies we do see some hair regrowth in the areas that are treated with vertiporfin